بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم علی نبینا محمد وعلا علیہ وصحبہ وسلم مبع ایو الحبہ in a very important piece entitled The Root Causes Behind the Excessive Differing Between Ahl Sunnah. This piece is very beneficial for us and it gives us insight into some of the situations we find the Ummah in now in general and Ahl Sunnah specifically. And what we need to do in order to begin to rectify these illnesses that have befallen us. Ayyuala Habba, this is something beneficial from some of our scholars. And for example, this has some ta'liqat from Shaykh Ubaid al-Jabri, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, one of the Mashaykh of Medina. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him. And it is in reference to the mannerisms of differing between Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. The Shaykh said, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, I came across a great principle while I was reading a book by Al Albani dealing with issues where the ijtihad of the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah differ. I wish that the rest of my brothers would join me in benefiting from such beneficial statements consisting of benefits that are greatly needed in these days of ours, where a lot of differing and splitting is occurring without knowledge or wisdom. I added comments to Allama Al-Albani's work, may Allah have mercy upon him, and I called the booklet, The Manners of Differing Between Ahlul Sunnah, a compilation or compilation of what is obligatory upon Ahlul Sunnah, the people of unity and harmony, to consider when differing occurs between them. I say, and with Allah alone lies success. At present times, a lot of differing is taking place in many countries, as well as arguments, transgression, and the exchange, exchange of accusations and criticisms between those who affiliate themselves to Ahlul Sunnah and outwardly demonstrate that they are adhering to it. They do so without any correct reasons that would necessitate such behavior. The root causes of this phenomenon usually go back to two main causes. So here the Sheikh is going to mention the two main causes that he found of why people, of why people from Ahlul Sunnah themselves differ. For example, the, the differences between some of the du'at, the callers to Islam, some of the students of knowledge, and even perhaps some of the scholars, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rectify our conditions and affairs. He says the first thing, firstly, the ignorant, different categories of learners, people who have recently started practicing the religion in youth, all of whom prematurely put themselves forward on the podium of calling to the religion of Allah, involving themselves in intricate matters of knowledge and wanting to lead others like them. SubhanAllah. A lot of times this is driven by the hidden desire. It is the love of fame, being at the forefront and assuming positions of leadership, which drives them to wage war against anyone or everyone who may lower their public reputation, their leadership, or invalidate it. They battle whether it is with the truth or falsehood. So the Sheikh here is mentioning, just for clarity, that the first reason for this excessive splitting and differing between Ahl Sunnah is because there are some individuals, maybe they have newly studied the religion, some of the youth, or they newly, they, maybe they haven't even practiced, studied the religion, but they are practicing now, and they are prematurely trying to give da'wah. And not just trying to give da'wah ayu al habba but they're putting themselves in place positions of leadership. Maybe the people are raising them up and they're criticizing one another and other individuals from Ahl Sunnah without the knowledge and right to do so. 
and they will argue to defend their position, whether it is based on the truth or whether it is based on falsehood. The important thing for them is to win the argument and win their position. Then the Sheikh goes on to say about this group, he said, adhering to the truth and acting upon it fades away while they battle to attain their benefits and desires. Being obstinate with falsehood, as is the case with the people of innovations in their reactions with the people of rectification. The mujaddidun, meaning the revivers in the religion. The scholars who act upon their knowledge and the scholars who act upon their knowledge. If this takes place, then don't bother asking about this, about, uh, don't asking, don't bother asking after this about the lies that take place about others' faults following up on their mistakes and rejoicing at their propagation because that means these individuals, you know, if they're doing all this other stuff out of arrogance, defending falsehood based on arrogance and defending their position based on arrogance and not knowledge, whether it's truth or falsehood, then don't even bother worrying about whether they're talking about individuals and following people's mistakes because first and foremost, they're going to be falling into these other traits of listening and following up, chasing up other people's mistakes with the incorrect intention. Then the shaykh goes on to say, and rejoicing at their propagation. Then the shaykh goes on to say, half of Allah Ta'ala, it is an obligation upon the believer to rise above such appalling behavior, the behavior and manner, mannerisms of the hypocrites. And we will talk about, in order to keep this concise, we'll go into the second characteristic in another uh, sitting and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.